He's hoping that. Uh, he's, he's banking on that. He's banking on that either being true or the ref buying into that or judges buying into that because he, it's not the case. He doesn't believe that. There's no way he believes that. This is Jonathan Agger for Pro Boxing Fans, joined by Chris Billum Smith. Chris, uh, Richard Riatbo on June 15th, the rematch. Uh, did you think all these years later you'd meet again? Yeah, I always thought we would as long as we kept on winning. That's uh, That was the important thing. Um, I think a couple of years ago I didn't quite realise that you know, I'd be uh, defending my belt against him. I thought I'd be taking his belt off him, but you know, um, he's he's a mandatory challenger for me now. And uh, you know, since the first fight, I think my my career's gone a lot better than his has, and we're here now. Yeah, it, it's a kind of surprised me that he's the favourite heading in, given sort of you're the champion, you've got the momentum. Were you are you surprised? I don't know if you even checked the odds, but yeah, the, the bookmakers think he he's favourite. Yeah, they always do. Um, Lawrence was the same, three, three to one underdog against Lawrence, I think, by the time the fight came round, and uh, that uh, you know that really doesn't bother me. The, the bookies, bookies odds, it's uh, pretty. It's just more motivation for me, and uh, I'll just cause another upset. Uh, you said up there that you know you're quite happy. It's not at, at Bournemouth; it's at Selhurst Park. Uh, is that just giving sort of your fans an away day? Is that kind of what, what excites you? Yeah, and like when I look at it, it's like you know it, um, you could talk about having numerous fights at the Vitality. You know, I could have done, but you know they, they, the club couldn't do it anyway. You know, Boxer wanted it down there for the for the fan base and and, and my proven you know um, ticket sales, but. I'm buzzing this is so I'm a football fan first and foremost so um, I get to box at another football stadium I get to, you know get to box at another football stadium that's that's te teed off um, and when all said and done in my career I can go back and look at two massive domestic fights at two different Premier League football stadiums so uh, very very lucky Do you feel like you will though one day get the chance to fight back at the Vitality? Yeah possibly it could happen next year um, who knows who knows but um, very, very fortunate and grateful to, to Boxer, Sky Sports and, and AFC Bournemouth for giving me my opportunity last year and that will forever be a, 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 an unforgettable night. What do you think the atmosphere is going to be like, uh, you know, supposedly in front of his, his fans? I mean, he is from London, so do you think it's going to be hostile or do you think the Bournemouth fans can drown, drown out the London? Yeah, I'm sure we'll bring some uh, good fans. They'll... We, they, they love a London away day, um, as, as, as have I enjoyed a few before with, uh, with Bournemouth fans. Um, away fans are always the better atmosphere, right, when they, when they travel to a, to a stadium. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, I, think, I, think the, the, I think the fans are going to enjoy it. I think, I don't know if the atmosphere is going to, it's certainly not going to be like it was at, at the Vitality in terms of percentages. I think uh, we'll have a solid, solid amount there. In the press conference, he kind of suggested that you know you get hit quite a lot, and he sees that as you know his route to victory. Uh, you know, what would you say back to that? He's hoping that, that um, he's hoping that uh, he's he's banking on that. He's banking on that either being true or the ref buying into that or judges buying into that because he, it's not the case. He doesn't believe that. There's no way he believes that. Um, so yeah, maybe he's trying to paint a narrative, um, but that is not the case. And uh, I'll show that on fight night. When you look back at the first fight, what, what, what do you think? Because it, it was a very close fight. And when I spoke to Shane, he said, you know, you were more, you know, boxing on, on the back foot and things. And it's a completely different version of you. But when you look back, what would you think of it? Uh, yeah, it was a close fight. It was a very raw fight. We watched the highlights the other day in the Sky Studios and uh, very raw. But when you actually look at the, the stature of us both compared to now I'm like a I look about three weight divisions below what I look now when I get in the ring so uh, I think he'll be in for a, a big shock on fight night but yeah looking at that fight it's just yeah I look like a completely different person and, and I was especially in terms of boxing um, a very very different um, much more mature filled into the weight um, and a very solid cruiserweight drop to Coley multiple times uh, do you feel like you can stop Riappel absolutely yeah absolutely uh, how do you think Akali's going to do uh, against um, the Bridgeweight champion, whose name I'm forgetting? Rizansky, yeah. Um, yeah, no, he'll, uh, 
he, he be him. He should be him. You know, Lawrence. If you haven't got any experience of fighting someone like Lawrence, you you're going to struggle. Um, he's a very good trainer. Uh, Joe Gallagher, who's very good in the corner as well, in between rounds. Uh, very experienced, um, and Lawrence knows what to do. He's um, he, he's he's a very good fighter. Look, the I was very fortunate to have the the 200 rounds of sparring under my belt uh, to go into that fight. And without them, I don't. I probably wouldn't have beaten him, truthfully. But um, they, they were key. So I expect Lawrence to, to to do a very very good job and probably get rid of him around the middle rounds. Uh, as you know, I spoke to Zerdo Ramirez, the other champion, uh, and he wants to fight you. Uh, you've also got Bradis and Opataya. Uh, who's your more, more preferred option? Uh, for me, it's uh, it's America. I want to fight in, in the states. Like that. When you're a boxing fan in over here, you wanna you wanna be in big domestic fights, and if you manage to conquer them and then fulfill your dreams here, you wanna fight in the states. You wanna. You know, most people want to go to Vegas, and there's a possibility. You know, Zerdo's boxed there before, but um, if not, I'm happy to go to, to LA or anywhere in the states to, to fight him. It'd be uh, I want to do the whole training camp out there. I want to experience an American fight night um, as a as an actual fighter, and it'd be a real honour for me. And uh, on the Opatia Breedis fight, you've obviously done loads of rounds with Breedis. Uh, do you think he's gonna gonna pull it off? With, well, a lot of people would probably say it's an upset. Yeah, I think they, they would because of the the hype surrounding Opatia now, but. Breedis is a solid fighter. Obviously, he's been a bit inactive. Um, depends how the um, how his camp's gone and, and how the layoff has affected him and what sort of shape he's in. That'll be a, a big key factor. But you know, you're gonna have to favour up a tire with, with the current. Uh, form and stuff like that as long as he's not you know um, dining out on his, on his own hype and, and getting overconfident just a, a couple of predictions to ask you for uh, June 1st uh, Baturbiev against Bivol who do you think is going to win that? Uh, Baturbiev I think uh, you can't argue with a, a ratio like that you know the amount of fights he's been in all knockouts at, at world level it's just phenomenal um, and I just I think you need power to keep him off um, and I don't think Bivol's got enough enough power to keep him off and uh, your old stablemate Daniel Dubois against Hergovic uh, do you think he's going to win? I fancy Daniel in that fight I think Daniel's you know he's, he, he's got a bit of a resurgence and he's just um, putting his the, 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 the way he dealt with, with Miller was really good you know and um Hergovic is a really good fighter, but I feel like there's more and he's never shown it. He's never really, really turned up. You know, the Zhang fight, for example. Look, we know how good Zhang is and how difficult he can be, but Hergovic has never really um, just wowed me as much as the, a lot of hype around him. But I may be wrong. He may he may do the business, but um, uh, yeah, you know, I'd, uh, I'd like to see Dan do it. And uh, finally, uh, Tyson Fury, Alexander Usyk uh, in a few weeks. Uh, how is Tyson Fury in, in peak condition, peak sort of you know time in his career to, to pull this off, or do you think Usyk's got the edge? Um, I think it's, it's a weird one, isn't it? Because of the uh, the situation between like with Fury hasn't looked great since sort of the second Wilder fight. Um, so if he's still that, you know. If he can go back to that level, we can get the win just because of his size, his stature, his ability. But Usyk just seems, un, you know, just not unbeatable necessarily, but like mentally just you can't break him. And, and Fury always looks to try and gain that mental edge, and I'm not sure he will. So, uh, look, it's a, it's, a, it's a close fight either way. But um, if Fury can dominate and use his size and hit him to the body, then he, he can definitely get the win. Um, but... If it goes to points against Usyk, you're gonna you're gonna be hoping that you've you've locked him down a lot because the way he fights, he's constantly moving, constantly changing the angles, changing his height, moving his head, uh, picking his feet up. So uh, it's it's a tough night work for both men. Chris, appreciate your time. Good luck, June 15. Cheers, John.